أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد ومن الناس من يجادل في الله بغير علم ويتبع كل شيطان مريد كتب عليه أنه من تولاه فأنه يضله ويهديه إلى عذاب السعير يا أيها الناس إن كنتم في ريب من البعث فإنا خلقناكم من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم من علقة ثم من مضغة مخلقة وغير مخلقة لنبين لكم ونقر في الأرحام ما نشاء إلى أجل مسمى ثم نخرجكم طفلا ثم لتبلغوا أشدكم ومنكم من يتوفى ومنكم من يرد إلى أرذل العمر لكي لا يعلم من بعد علم شيئا وترى الأرض هامدة فإذا أنزلنا عليها الماء اهتزت وربت وأنبتت من كل زوج بهيج ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأنه يحيي الموتى وأنه على كل شيء قدير وأن الساعة آتية لا ريب فيها وأن الله يبعث من في القبور صدق الله العظيم This is the beginning of Surah Al-Hajj And since there are some ayahs in this surah that talk about Hajj and in fact talk about the beginning of Hajj. So the surah is named after those ayahs and that topic that is discussed in the surah. But as just with any other surahs, the surah will be named after one of the important topics that is discussed in the surah, but that's not the only topic of the surah, there are many other messages and topics that have been covered in the surah. The beginning portion of the surah talks about the hereafter. And mainly this is the theme of the whole surah, reminding us of Akhirah and proving the reality of the Akhirah for those who have any doubts about it. What does having doubt mean? Inshallah we will discuss that later on. The Surah has said named after just one of the topics that have been discussed in the surah, whereas the main theme of the surah is reminder of the akhirah. When we look at this ibadah, which is hajj, and the surah is named after it, that ibadah is also a good reminder of akhirah. <coughs> when a person has to leave everything, and everyone going for Hajj with clothes that resemble the coffin and then being in the desert going from one place to another place and all of them are deserts he even leaves Mecca and Medina you leave Medina you leave Kaabatullah and go out into the desert When you start analyzing this ibadah, we will see that large portion of this ibadah is a reminder of akhirah and 
reminding us of the day and the time when we will be placed in our coffin and sent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even the ibadah after which the surah is named is not anything different from the theme of the surah itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the surah with a reminder and then started proving what he is reminding us of. Ya ayyuhal nasu taqo rabbakum All mankind fear your Lord. Inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim Surely the earthquake of the hour will be a terrible indeed. Always have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may translate this as fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means, fear Allah, don't disobey Him. Fear Allah, fulfill His orders and His commands. Because one day you will be facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that day He will question you of what you have done with his deen and with his orders. Ittaqo Rabbakum. As we see the word taqwa is used without going to the details of taqwa, as we talked about it many times before, but we need to still remind our souls of a very important point, and that is, when sometimes we say, I am not a very muttaqi person. These orders are for the people of taqwa. I am just a normal person. If a person really feels that he is not a mustaqi, he does not have the taqwa, then he should recite this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering him to become a mustaqi. Ittaqu rabbakum. Now for a person to say, I am not a mustaqi. This is nothing but admitting to be in negligence of the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person is satisfied being in that situation where he does not have a taqwa, she does not have a taqwa, and then they are satisfied with it, and they claim it too, oh, I don't have the taqwa. This is not for me. This is for the people of taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding those people that then you must work on obtaining taqwa. And if you are satisfied with anything less than that, you are going against the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ittaqu rabbakum. Inna zalzalat as-sa'ati shaykun azim. The earthquake of the hour will be terrible indeed. Zalzala means anything that will shake things up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to some zalzala that belongs to a sa'a which means the day of judgment. There will be two major earthquakes at that time that will shake everything and everyone up. One before the day of judgment and one on the day of judgment. Which one is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to in this ayah? Both are possible, but more possibility by looking at the ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the first one, which will be before the day of judgment. Imam Qurtubi rahmatullahi alayhi have narrated, not from a hadith, but he says there was a narration from the past that that earthquake will be in the middle of Ramadan. And just after that earthquake, then the major signs of the Qiyamah will be seen after which then the Tawbah will not be accepted and then the Day of Judgment will take place. Whatever that might be, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that the, that earthquake will be the real earthquake. Zalzalat al saa The earthquake that we see these days that comes to a small portion of the land is nothing comparing to that earthquake that will be coming one day and will not just shake few villages or cities or only few countries it will shake up the whole world. And not only that it will shake up the whole world after that earthquake nothing will remain on the, sur- on the surface of the earth. Everything will be flat. It will the whole earth will become a flat surface. No building, no tree, no mountain, nothing will remain on the surface of this earth. After that earthquake, the earth will be ready for hisab, so all the people will gather on it and will stand on that open land waiting for the judgment. As the people who are affected by these earthquakes that we see nowadays and we hear about, how do they feel? <coughs> what was the situation over there? Many of us, we see what happened in those places. And as I said, this is something very minor. It's nothing comparing to that zilzala, that earthquake that will come at the time of the Day of Judgment. And in fact, that will be the earthquake that will come to the whole world and therefore there is no one that will be willing to help others. Everyone is in the same situation. All people have lost everything they have. And imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shay'un azim, it will be something real big. It will be something real big. And who's saying this azim? Who's using the word azim? The word who is azim himself. He tells us that don't take that lightly. It will be a terrible situation. And therefore he reminds us of something very important. He says, <laughs> Live the life of taqwa. What does this mean? It simply means that if you live the life of taqwa, that day will become easy for you. Otherwise, why should have taqwa remembering that day? What is it that we are going to get by having uh, a taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have the taqwa of Allah because in the zanzara tassa'ati shaykhun azim. So he's reminding us of that and he says, you better prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? By having taqwa. That taqwa will protect the people from having the effect of that earthquake and from being affected by that. And of course, everyone may be affected to a certain extent. As far as losing the worldly gains, the worldly things, losing homes, castles, whatever we have, that is for sure happening to every person. But, upon losing these things, and a person knows that this is Zanzal at the this is the shaking up before the Day of Judgment, at the time of the Day of Judgment, next thing, the coming up is Day of Judgment. By knowing that the people of Iman, the people of Taqwa, will be satisfied that insha'Allah we will be facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we may say, we are in good hands. And the people who did not live the life of Taqwa, they are the ones who will really be in a difficult situation knowing that we have not prepared for the state. Have the taqwa of Allah because that earthquake will be something real big, real major. And just by your worldly preparations, you will not be able to take it, you will not be able to face it. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a few examples of how terrible that would be that day would be. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْبَعَةٍ The day you will see it, every nursing mother will forget her nursing baby. First thing, let us look at the beauty of the language. That will give us a better understanding of what the message of the ayah is. Murdi'ah. Murdi'ah in Arabic language means a woman that is nourishing her body, breastfeeding her child at this moment. If we take the ha out of the word murdi'a and we use the word murdi'a without the ha at the end, it means a mother who nourishes her baby, who breastfeeds her baby. So, may not be doing it at this time, but yes, she had a child, a young child. But, when the word is used with the ha at the end, it means she is engaged in this action at this time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word murti'ah, a woman that is engaged in that action at this time, the child is hungry. Try to think of a situation. What would be the situation when a mother who is nourishing her child. She knows my son, my daughter, my child is hungry. And then while she is nourishing the child, she is going to pull the child away and throw the child and run away. Under what circumstances a mother would do something like this? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. It's not only the mothers who have their infants laying down in another room, or even in the same room and they are not busy in that action at this time. Even the mothers who are feeding their child at this very moment, when that earthquake will come, they will throw their children and run away. تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْبَعَةٍ Every nourishing mother will keep away, will throw away, will forget her nursing baby. Not only that she would separate the child from her, as she throws her child, she will run away so much, so much, with so much fear, that she cannot even think about her child anymore. She forgets about him. At least, in a difficult situation, God forbid, God forbid, there is a fire in the house. And if a mother leaves her child and runs out, as soon as she gets out, she may stand crying for her child. Oh, my baby is inside. Please help me get him out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, she won't even think this much. She will totally forget about her. She doesn't even want to think about her child. This will be the situation on that day. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا And every pregnant female will miscarry. Now the first situation was at least in the person's control. Out of fear, the person out of his own willingness, the mother out of her own willingness, she will throw the child away. But now the second situation, you don't even have control over it. So much fear that a mother, she doesn't even think about it and she miscarries because of the fear. The second situation is showing that the situation will be even worse than what we are seeing in the first example. Because the first example, after all, this is in the person's control. She will do it on her own. The second situation, she doesn't even have any control over it. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَ النَّاسَ سُكَارَا And generally the situation will be, when you look at people, you will see people 
as if they are intoxicated. وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارًا But they are not drunk. When you see a group of people that are drunk and they are badly they're, mm, intoxicated from that drinking, a person is just running here and there, cries, falling there back and forth, doesn't know what he's doing, doesn't know where he's going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this will become the situation of people. People are just running back and forth with that earthquake. They are falling here and there. And with the fear, they are just trying to run somewhere and they don't know where to run to. وَمَا هُمْ They are not drunk. But, وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ But the punishment of Allah is very severe. Now they will see everything that is coming ahead of them. Now they will see everything that was mentioned in the book of Allah and in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be very true. Yes, we were informed of this time. We were not preparing our souls for it. Here we see the deed. As I said, there will be two earthquakes. One before the Day of Judgment. One on the Day of Judgment. And both of them will scare the people who did not live the life of Taqwa. As far as those who had lived the life of Taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, in the previous surah, surah, surah Al-Anbiya, لَا يَحْزُنُهُمُ الْفَزَعُ الْأَكْبَرُ The great calamity will not grieve them. They will not grieve because of that, because of their laws, because of anything that happened in the world, because they know they are going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they have nothing to worry about. They won't grieve. And as far as those who have not said anything good for the Azra, those are the people who will be feeling bad for leaving whatever they had over here. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شديد. Allah's punishment is very severe. And of course, now these people will see the reality of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah or in these ayahs have given few examples of how sweer that day will be and how difficult the day will be that mothers will forget her, their children and they will miscarry and people will look like they are drunk. By these examples, by looking at these examples, many of the Mufassirin have said, determined that this is talking about the first earthquake which will be before the Day of Judgment because on the Day of Judgment there won't be no pregnant woman, there will be no woman that will be nourishing their children. So, it's simple means that this will be in this dunya while people are still living in this world before the day of judgment will take place. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he talked about the signs of qiyamah and especially the major signs of qiyamah. He mentioned Three earthquakes, or three times when people will be swallowed by the earth. People will just disappear as a azab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, these three will be as major signs. Before that, there will be many minor signs. As a minor sign, a lot of people will be swallowed by the earth. A lot of people will be destroyed by earthquakes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in some of his ahadith that before the day of judgment, a lot of earthquakes will stand in the world. And in other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a lot of people will start getting swallowed by the earth as azab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like it happened to Qarun. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it will happen so much so that every morning people will be questioning each other who was destroyed last night. Who got into the adab last night? Every morning people will wake up and they will be asking each other. This is how much it will happen. And the hadith also tell us that there will be a lot of killing and a lot of death in the world. All of these things now we see them as they are happening and they are on the increase day by day. It's only proving the truthfulness of these statements made by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the same time they are reminding us of our responsibility towards Allah and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no matter what we do, how we live, what we earn, what we are going to make in this world, just one simple shaking of the earth that will come only for minutes and people have lost everything they had. No difference between the wealthy and the poor. They all are standing on the same field. The one who had more, had more worries, and in fact feels worse than those who had less because his loaf is more. But some of the recent earthquakes, we started getting different type of news from people that were there and their relatives. And some of the situations were such that people, they worked in some other countries staying away from their families for years and years. There are people who lived in other countries for 15, 20 years. All they were doing during that time is trying to just survive with the minimum in that part of the land wherever they were working, sending everything back home, and by those by whatever they made during those years, they built beautiful houses for them. We may call them beautiful castles with every mean of comfort over there. That is everything, and they bought all the best sets, everyone around them looking at them, look how lucky they are. After spending 15, 20 years away from the family, struggling, working so hard, and building all of this, the person came back home only some years ago, and here this earthquake takes place. He is back to where he was. Having nothing. And in fact, losing some of the family members on top of that. Imagine what would be the situation of that person. Who sees his whole life coming down to the earth. That's it. Nothing is there. Worse than this will be the situation of a person who himself is being put under the ground and sees nothing to present over there. After all, this person is still in this dunya and he sees things that he built are gone. But for a person who has left the dunya, he knows there is no way for me to make up for anything anymore. That's it. Everything is gone. Nothing that I have earned, none of my family members, none of my friends and relatives, no one that claimed to help me is here to be with me today in this situation. Imagine what will be in the situation of this person now. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, Ittaqoo Rabbakum. Have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> that is the thing that will give us some perfection in the akhirah. That is the thing that will help us in that situation. Other than that, as I said, this person who spent 15, 20 years building everything that he feels he will need in his life, and he really built everything in the best way possible, got the best things around him, and he has so much saving that he feels that for the rest of my life I don't even need to work anymore. 
and I have so much savings that I will marry all of my children and spend thousands of on their marriage, and I will do this and I will do that with long plans. All of a sudden, he sees everything is back to the ground. And, in fact, he sees the very same things that they have used to build all of these things, beautiful homes. He sees the very same thing is just killing his own family members and they are just buried under it. Whatever that person's feeling may be is very understandable, but we need to remind ourselves the situation of a person who would leave the world. He is placed in his grave and realizes that all of my effort was only for that dunya and all of a sudden I left it without bringing anything with me. And I did not bring anything over here. I see none of my deeds over here. I just wasted my life after all of those things. And now I don't see nothing over here. That person's feelings will be much worse than these people who were who lost whatever they lost in the earthquake. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, Ittaqu Rabbakum, have the taqwa of Allah before that day will come. Before that earthquake will come, where we all will be affected by it. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ You will see people as they, as they are drunk, but they are not really drunk. It's the عَذَابَ of Allah that is ahead of them. And now they see the عَذَابَ of Allah is coming. And who can take the عَذَابَ of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Really, we need to sometimes sit by our souls and remind our souls. Do I have the strength to take the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A scholar sitting in one of the masajid, and as we know in those days in the past, people used to really work hard for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they did not have lights night time. The scholar is sitting, he is studying, and he had a small lamp next to him that was burning. As he is sitting over there, it was raining heavy outside. Someone knocks at the door of the masjid, and he finds out that there is a woman that as that she was asking for some protection that somewhere that she can just at least be there so that she can save her, so she can protect herself from the heavy rain. So he, of course, it's the masjid, he opens the door of the masjid, she comes and sits over there. While he's studying, she sees him every few minutes, he puts his finger into that burning lamp and he burns his finger a little. So in the morning she asked him that I'm really surprised of what I had seen from you last night that as you are sitting you are burning your finger every some time. Why were you doing that for? So he says, because you were in the masjid, the shaitan came and started bringing different thoughts in my mind. So I was reminding myself that can you take this much burning? And it's still coming to sense. And if you can't take even this much, how can you take the adab of the akhirah? Sometimes, a person may feel that I'm getting chopped. And right there, the situation gets so difficult for this person. If a person feels that I'm chopped, I can't breathe. I have some pain in my chest. Just these things are so terrible that we can't take it. It worries the person so much. Imagine when the person is in the adab of the akhirah. And the person is placed in his grave. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the grave will start squeezing the person so much that his ribs will start getting into each other. 
how a person can take that situation. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ Allah's punishment is very severe. We can never take that adab. Some of the hadiths indicate that all the water that is in the world, which means oceans, they will turn into fire on the day of Qiyamah. All of this is going to turn into fire on the day of Qiyamah. There are authentic hadiths that talk about this. Sometime, I'm sure all of us have been at the seashore where you see small insects. Hundreds of them, sometimes thousands of them are there in the water. If one of them, one of these insects, loses the wings or breaks its leg, and it starts droning into the water. Is there anyone who would even know that this insect was droned in there? Is there anyone who would even care about that insect being droning into that water? Is there anyone who would feel that I need to jump there and make sure that none of these insects are droned? No one even cares. No one would even notice it. And this insect will keep on groaning and keep on suffering until it would die. Do you think our situation will be any better than that insect on the Day of Judgment when people are being thrown into Jahannam in thousands and millions? Who would look at us that where is this person? Who would even care about us? What will be our situation at that time? Imagine being drawn into the water today. And if we can't take being drawn into the water, how can we be... We can tolerate the situation and be in a position of being drawn into the ocean of fire. <coughs> Where? A person will be groaning continuously. He's choked. He's burning. But the death is not even coming at that time. Maybe good for this person if the death would come to him. But even the death doesn't want to come. Who can take? The punishment of Allah is very swear. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explaining some of the ayahs of Al-Quran al-Kareem that talk about the food of the people of Jahannam. That they will eat some type of things. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ صَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيعٍ لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ جُوعٍ And many other ayahs that talk about the food of the people of Jahannam. And their drink. That whatever they eat, it will be so hot, it will be boiling. That as soon as the person will just get it close to his mouth, just from the heat of it, without touching it, the lips are going to be falling down. And as the person will place it in his mouth, that thing will burn his whole mouth. Then it will be stuck in his throat. And it's trying to swallow it. And it's struggling with himself to swallow it. It goes down to the stomach. It's so hot and boiling that as it gets to the, into the stomach, it burns everything and everything is that coming off his intestines and everything is that coming off his back. And the person will be crying and shouting. Why would the person eat them? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith that when a person is placed in Jahannam, they will be so hungry hatta ya'dilu ma min al adab. They're, they will be so hungry that, they, that by itself will be equivalent to all the other azad that they are in. Imagine a person being burned. How terrible that is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, now he's just feeling hungry and thirsty, and these feelings being in that situation of being so hungry will be just equivalent to the azad of burning. 
And we know the azab of being hungry. It's not easy for us to take that situation. May Allah never put a person in that difficult situation. But we normally hear the word or use the word that these people are starving to death. We really don't know what is the situation when a person is just giving up his life because he's hungry. Just having with, to spend a day without a food, we can't take it. Imagine if after 24 hours now another day come, comes in and we didn't get nothing to eat or drink. How can we take that? And these are normal situation of this dunya that we cannot take. Imagine if this comes as a azab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. Allah But the punishment of Allah is very severe. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عَلْمٍ وَيَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِيدٍ Yet amongst people, there are some who debate about Allah without knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, People should live the life of taqwa. They should fear me. But, there are people who keep on Debating with people about Allah, يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ The غير علم without having any knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a person in Quraysh whose name was another Ibn al-Harith. This person would always argue with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Allah and about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we would say, no, Allah has daughters and malaika, the daughters of Allah, wa'ayyazu billah. Sometimes we would question, how can Allah bring everyone back to life? Do you think this is that easy? Sometimes we will bring different arguments. Our forefathers have died thousands of years ago. And none of them came back to life, and you are telling us that we will come back to life. This world is here, is there for so many years, and you are telling us everything is going to end. Yujadilu fillah. He had this habit of arguing about Allah without any knowledge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mainly is making the reference to that person, and generally, of course, is to every person who has that habit of Saying things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tells us and informs us that this is against the life of taqwa. As he told us to live the life of taqwa because the azab of Allah is very severe. So he tells us there are people who have this habit. Simply means these people don't have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have the fear of Allah. If a person would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would not say anything about Allah without knowledge. فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا Who can be more wrongdoer than a person? Who can be worse than a person? Who fabricates lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا Someone lies about us, someone lies about Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, worse than that is someone lying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iftara ala Allahi kadiba. And that of arguing about Allah without knowledge is to argue regarding the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. When a person says, arguing regarding the deen without having any knowledge of deen, this is also part of this. About which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, this person has no taqwa of Allah. He has no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise he would never do something like this. <laughs> if he has the fear of Allah, he will not start giving his opinions and arguing with people regarding the deen of Allah just on the basis of his opinions. Which is something... In that time, maybe just another bit of and few more people 
But nowadays we see large number of people who have this habit. بغير علم Without any knowledge, it's something, it's such a word that if we start talking about it, you will be just getting into these details of how, what is our situation of the غير علم, of being without knowledge of deen and without knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The situation is so bad that the people who are considered to be good ones they don't have any time to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every person would just like to use his own opinions and his hopes about the deen of Allah. About Allah, about the deen of Allah. Oh Allah is great, He is very rahim, He is merciful. No knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only hopes. He is basing all of his akhirah only on hopes. Not on deeds. Not on reality and practices. For this dunya, he does not base the dunya on hopes. He wants to work for it. But for Akhirah, he wants to just base everything on hopes. For dunya, he doesn't want to use his opinion. He would like to get some good information about the thing before he would do something before he would take any step, he would like to make sure that he has the right knowledge about it. Before he gets to go to the go to the court, he wants to consult a lawyer or maybe even just hire one that will go with him. But when it comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person feels that opinions are enough. No knowledge of Quran, no knowledge of the Sharia, no knowledge of the uh, of the understanding of deen, of the fiqh of deen, no understanding of it whatsoever. But you see, the person deen might just wants to discuss this, these matters. Where did you get this from? Oh, I, I think I read it somewhere. This is a big thing that is happening. And as I said, the alim, without having any knowledge. The amazing, the situation is so amazing and so bad, in fact, that even those of us who may have any opportunity of learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we really don't feel that we need to avail those situations because why do I need it for? Just imagine how many people do really learn the deen of Allah. How many people are learning the deen of Allah? What is our situation with learning? What is the general community situation and every community? What is the general ummah situation regarding learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May, we may not even spend half an hour to learn the deen properly. Very bad situation when it comes to learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one problem is people are not learning. On top of this, this person wants to prove himself to be a great scholar and a great learned person, and he even wants to argue with people about Allah. Out of people there are some who argue regarding Allah without having any knowledge. And that person follows every rebellious shaitan. Very important point that we learn from this ayah. That as we learn the deen, it's very important for us to get the knowledge about Allah. Yujadilu fillah. Look at the words of the ayah. Allah says, there are people who argue about Allah without having any knowledge, which means we should learn whatever we can about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which in the terms of the sharia is known ma'rifatullah. Recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we recognize Allah? Of course, through His attributes. 
So recognizing Allah, having the ma'rifah of Allah, having the proper knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we should work on. يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرَ عَلْمِ Problem with some people, they have no knowledge about Allah and then they argue about it. So it's, an, a, it's, it's telling us our responsibility that we should learn whatever we can learn and what we are, we are, uh, we are supposed to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who have this habit of arguing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all these people are doing is, they are following the shaitan. And there are many shayateen. There are many shayateen. Some of them are real bad ones. As the hadith that talks about shayateen being chained during the month of Ramadan. Some of the muhaddisin have said, that those are the only, the very bad shayateen, the rebellious ones out of them are chained during the month of Ramadan. Not every shaitan that is with every person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this person now has gone so far from the deen that not only he's just following the normal shaitan that is with him, following any shaitan is bad, but this person, يَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِيدٍ He's following, following the very rebellious ones out of them. Which means, the situation, uh, if the ayah would have said, وَاسْتَبِعُوا shaitan, And he's following the shaitan. Well, have been enough to know that this person is not following the haq, he's not following the truth, he's following of the track. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, it's not only this much. It's he's even in a worse situation than that. And that is, he is following the very rebellious of the shayateen. Which means this person is totally out. He's gone too far. كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ For whom it is decreed that whoever will take him as his friend, whoever will take the shaytan as his friend, فَأَنَّهُ يُضِلُّ For sure the shaytan will mislead him. وَيَهْدِيهِ And shaytan will not be satisfied with anything less than وَيَهْدِيهِ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ And will drive him to the punishment of burning fire. Shaytan will not be satisfied with anything less than this. يُضِلُّ He will misguide him and it's not only that he will be satisfied with making him do few wrong things وَيَهْدِيهِ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ He will keep on leading him to the punishment of the uh, of, of Adab of the Jahannam. This is for those who will set making their connection with the Shaitan. And what is the sign of having that connection with Shaitan? That the person has the habit of arguing about Allah, about the deen of Allah, without having any knowledge. How clear the ayahs are. And it's still for those who claim that they understand Qur'an, you will see that they are doing the very same mistake. They are falling into the very same thing. Keep on arguing about ayahs of Allah, about the deen of Allah, without having no knowledge about it. After this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about akhirah, some proof that will prove that Akhirah is a reality. And it's such a reality that we can see it even in this world. There are examples in this life that shows us that Akhirah will be coming someday. That day will come someday when people will be resurrected and they will all be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will talk about these ayahs in our next sessions. أقول قولي هذا